Hello everyone. We continue our exploration of angelology and demonology on our channel, grounded in biblical teachings. If these topics pique your interest, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and check out our previous videos. Today, I want to share the powerful story of Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' most devoted followers. Her journey began with a troubled past. The Bible recounts in Luke 8 2 that Jesus cast out seven demons from her. Despite this darkness, she became part of Jesus' inner circle, supporting his ministry both spiritually and financially. When Jesus was crucified, Mary showed remarkable courage by standing by the cross, witnessing his final moments. On the morning of his resurrection, she, along with other women, went to the tomb to prepare his body with spices. This visit became a pivotal moment in history. Upon discovering the stone rolled away and encountering two angels at the tomb, she was soon met by the resurrected Jesus himself. When Jesus called her by name, saying Mary, she was so overcome with joy and disbelief that she grasped him tightly. Yet Jesus gently told her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. John 20:17. In this moment, Mary became the primary witness of the resurrection, tasked with sharing the astonishing news with the disciples. In the cultural context of Jesus' time, women were often not considered reliable witnesses. However, Jesus shattered societal norms by choosing Mary to deliver this miraculous message. Her story serves as a reminder that Jesus calls the broken, the unworthy, and those who may feel insignificant to share his love and grace with the world. At the onset of his ministry, Jesus faced a fierce confrontation with Satan. During his 40 days of fasting and prayer in the wilderness, the devil sought to tempt him. Similar to how Satan had tempted Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, he tried to persuade Jesus to worship him. Unlike the first humans, Jesus was not swayed. He quoted scripture, defeating the devil's temptations, which ultimately led Satan to flee, Matthew 4, 1, 11. So this encounter was just one of many. After calling his first disciples, Jesus entered a synagogue in Capernaum, where he encountered a man possessed by a demon. The man cried out, and Jesus commanded the unclean spirit to leave him, demonstrating his authority over evil. Mark 1, 21, 26. The people were astonished, asking, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him, Mark 1, 27. The Bible teaches us that Satan is a real spiritual being, the chief adversary of God. He is not merely a fictional character, but a powerful force with a vast army of demons, unclean spirits organized to undermine God's plans. While believers need not live in fear of the devil, understanding who he is and how he operates is crucial. Here are some essential truths about Satan. Satan is a fallen angel. Originally created as a servant of God, he was cast out of heaven due to his pride and rebellion, Ezekiel 28. Two. The devil is deceptive. The Bible warns that Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light, 2 Corinthians 11:14. Without spiritual discernment, many fail to recognize his tactics. 3. Satan has a kingdom. Due to human sin, he gained a temporary foothold in the world. 1 John 5:19 states, "We know that we are of God." and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. This means that Satan and his demonic forces can influence individuals, leading them toward evil. 4. Satan seeks to destroy. Jesus described the devil's intent. The thief does not come except to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. John 10.10 10. Satan's kingdom thrives on deceit, hate, and chaos, seeking to undermine God's creation. 5. Satan is not omnipotent. Unlike God, who is omnipresent, Satan cannot be everywhere at once. Jesus remarked that he saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, Luke 10, 18. Although he operates through his demons, he lacks the power of divine presence. 6. Christ has defeated Satan. Through his death on the cross, Jesus disarmed the powers of darkness, making a public spectacle of them, Colossians 2, 15. 
Though Satan can cause chaos, his ultimate power has been rendered ineffective against those who are in Christ. 7. Believers have authority over demons. Before ascending to heaven, Jesus declared, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. Mark 16, 17. The book of Acts recounts numerous instances where believers commanded demons to leave demonstrating that Christians do not need to fear unclean spirits. Instead, we can exercise our authority in Jesus' name. It's essential to remember that Satan's ultimate fate is sealed. Jesus taught that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, Matthew 25, 41. Revelation 20, 10 depicts the final judgment where Satan will be cast into the lake of fire, destined for eternal torment. This truth terrifies the enemy, for the kingdom of God is infinitely more powerful than his dark realm. As believers in Christ, we need not be intimidated by the devil. While it's essential to recognize his tactics and develop spiritual discernment, we can stand firm in our faith. Romans 16.20 reassures us that the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Because of Jesus' victory on the cross, we can trust that one day evil will be vanquished for good. When we examine the seven churches in the book of Revelation, we uncover descriptions of specific demonic strongholds that can influence the church. Let's explore these spirits in more detail. 1. The Spirit of Religion, Revelation 2, 4, 5. The church in Ephesus lost its first love despite maintaining sound doctrine. While they worked hard and had everything in place, their passion for God faded. In Acts 19, we see their vibrant beginnings baptizing in water, laying hands on believers for the Holy Spirit, casting out demons, and performing miracles. However, they became entangled in a lifeless routine of religious activity, and the fire of the Holy Spirit diminished. Many churches today mirror this loss of spiritual vitality, falling prey to the deadening spirit of religion. Oh, how often do we find ourselves in rituals devoid of passion? This spirit must be identified and expelled from our churches. 2. The Spirit of Intimidation, Revelation 2, 10, 11. The church in Smyrna faced intense persecution, with many members suffering martyrdom. But Satan uses intimidation to instill fear, attempting to make believers compromise their faith. Recall Peter's moment of fear when he denied Jesus to save himself. Today, many Christians remain silent out of fear of the world's response. We must cast out the spirit of intimidation. 3. The Spirit of Compromise, Revelation 2, 13, 17, the church in Pergamum, a city known for its cultural and religious diversity, struggled against a spirit of compromise. Surrounded by idolatry and secular humanism, they faced pressure to conform. Jesus warned them against tolerating sin and called for repentance. The spirit of Balaam, which led God's people into sin through compromise, is still a threat today. We must hold firmly to the word of God and stand against the encroachment of sin and compromise in our churches. As we reflect on these strongholds, it's crucial to recognize our calling to stand firm against the forces of darkness. We must reject the spirit of religion, intimidation, and compromise, actively pursuing a vibrant relationship with Christ. Ultimately, we have access to the powerful weapons of prayer, worship, and the Word of God to combat these spiritual battles. Jesus promised that those who endure will receive gifts and rewards. We as the church must advance boldly, relying on Christ's strength and authority to overcome the darkness and proclaim His light to the world. But let us stand together steadfast in faith, knowing that our victory is assured through Christ, who has already overcome the world. A dead church resembles a graveyard filled with unfulfilled goals and unfinished programs, symbolizing a journey where congregations have faltered in their faith. Churches that regress face inevitable demise, thus leaders must unite to expel the spirit of religion and repent for their stagnation. They need to recognize that the kingdom of Jesus is imminent and all accomplishments in his name will be scrutinized. In many lifeless churches, a handful of believers embody vitality and the desire for a deeper relationship with God. This faithful remnant should be uplifted and religious pride that stifles growth must be expelled. It is crucial to abandon the love for ritualistic religion and fully embrace the love of Jesus. Leaders must commit to hearing the Holy Spirit's guidance in all church matters, 
allowing his word to direct their ministry. Revelation 3, 7, 8, 12 illustrates the spirit of insignificance. Often when pastors invite speakers, they do so with an apologetic tone, stating, we're just a small church. This mindset undermines the kingdom of God, which views nothing as insignificant. Conversely, some churches bloated with pride over their numbers remain satisfied with mediocrity as long as it garners fame. In Revelation, God addresses such complacency with urgency, promising to keep the faithful from impending trials if they hold fast to their faith. The church in Philadelphia, despite external pressures from pagan worship and cultural diversity, maintained its commitment to Christ for over 1,400 years, highlighting the power of faith against insignificance. They recognized the Lord of possibilities and embraced God's promise of the key of David, ensuring their perseverance and victory. On the contrary, the Laodicean church, once thriving due to its wealth and self-sufficiency, fell into mediocrity. Their lukewarm state nauseated Jesus, reflecting a broader issue within many modern churches. Self-satisfaction led them away from passionate devotion and they lost their zeal for prayer and mission. Laodicea's reliance on material wealth became its curse, overshadowing spiritual poverty. Despite their claims of prosperity, God viewed them as wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. This false sense of security deprived them of true community and unity in Christ, as they had closed the door to His presence. Jesus continually knocks, longing for fellowship and restoration, or sprint. In conclusion, the analysis of these ancient churches serves as a powerful reminder to contemporary faith communities. The focus must shift from complacency, pride, and self-sufficiency toward a genuine, fervent commitment to Christ. Believers are called to humility, repentance, and unity, fostering a collective pursuit of spiritual vitality and obedience to God. The analysis emphasizes the importance of genuine spiritual vitality, unwavering faith, and a deep-rooted commitment to Christ's teachings. It warns against the perils of prioritizing material wealth, religious tradition, or human achievements over spiritual growth and obedience to God. Moreover, it underscores the need for humility, repentance, and a fervent pursuit of Christ-centered unity within the church. Overall, the video serves as a call to action for believers and churches to reevaluate their spiritual priorities, overcome complacency, and embrace a renewed dedication to Christ. It encourages a holistic approach to faith that integrates spiritual fervor, radical obedience, and unwavering trust in God's transformative power. This video encourages churches and individuals alike to reassess their spiritual priorities and rekindle their dedication to Christ's teachings. Join our channel for further discussions and insights on ancient churches and their relevance to modern faith. Join our channel for in-depth discussions on ancient churches and their lessons for modern faith. Subscribe now to stay tuned for new videos and stay up to date with the latest research and analysis.